Finals SAQ 28, Ovarian Malignancy The case a 52-year-old woman is to undergo laparotomy for ovarian malignancy. Having completed three cycles of primary chemotherapy, she has a BMI of 23 but massive ascites. Additional info. Ovarian malignancy risk includes familial, including BRCA1 and 2 genes, obesity and nulliparity. It may be secondary from elsewhere such as bowel or breast. Malignant cells slough off and spread to any intra-abdominal surface or organ. Surgery may result in removal of large number of abdominal and pelvic organs, pelvic exenteration, resulting in ureteric diversion and colostomy. Lymphatic spread above the diaphragm may occur. Hematogenous spread occurs to the lung parenchyma, pleura, skin, CNS and bone. Chemotherapy for debulking prior to surgery followed by post-op chemotherapy is common. Paclitaxel and cisplatin are commonly used. What specific features of this case will affect the anesthetist approach to the preoperative, intraoperative and postoperative management? Preoperative management. Airway. Massive ascites increases the risk of reflux. Ascites may require draining preoperatively. B for breathing. Pleural effusion. Assess the likelihood of pleural effusion with exercise tolerance, auscultation, percussion, and imaging. Significant effusions require drainage prior to operation. Ascites massively reduces FRC, which increases vasoatelectasis, shunt, VQ mismatch, and hypoxia. Consider the need to drain preoperatively and physiotherapy post-drainage. Cardiac. Assess for cardiotoxic effects of paclitaxel and cisplatin. Assess exercise tolerance and echocardiography. Pericardial effusions may be present, detected on ECG and echo. Indwelling venous access may already be in situ for chemotherapy. There is a need to consider where to place IV lines for operation. Veins may be difficult to cannulate due to chemotherapy and previous use. Pharmacology. Adverse effects of paclitaxel and cisplatin, such as bone marrow suppression, should be checked by a full blood count. Renal damage should be assessed by urea and electrolytes. Liver dysfunction should be assessed by liver function test and coagulation profile. Cardiotoxicity assessed by echocardiography. Discuss with oncologists regarding any other effects of chemotherapeutic agents that have been received. Diuretics may have been used to attempt to alleviate effusions and ascites, check for electrolyte imbalance that may require correction. The patient may already be on anti therapy to treat nausea vomiting associated with chemotherapy. Ensure uninterrupted anti treatment perioperatively. The patient may already be on opioid therapy for pain control. Consider basal opioid requirements when planning post-op analgesia. Opioids reduces gastric motility and this increases risk of aspiration. Hematology. There is high risk of deep vein thrombosis due to procoagulant factors released by cancer and venous obstruction due to intra-abdominal mass and ascites. Some patients may already be receiving thromboprophylaxis. There is a need for perioperative thromboprophylaxis plan. Liver dysfunction may cause coagulopathy Check coagulation profile and correct appropriately. Risk of significant bleeding with removal of many intra-abdominal and pelvic organs necessitates cross-match preoperatively. Immune and infection. Marrow suppression due to chemotherapy increases the risk of infection. Assess existing infections preoperatively and adequate antimicrobial coverage. Renal. There is risk of renal toxicity from chemotherapy and this dictates drugs used perioperatively. Liver. There is risk of liver dysfunction from chemotherapy, cholestasis secondary to massive ascites, and metastasis. Assess via liver function tests and consider impact on choice of drugs to be used. Nutrition. Malnutrition and dehydration risk is due to anorexia, chemotherapy, and ascites. There may be need for intravenous fluid replacement preoperatively and dietitian involvement from the outset.
Next is intraoperative management. Airway. Intubate and provide IPPV. Surgery is major and may be prolonged. Sometimes the patient may be positioned head down, typically in supine position. There is risk of reflux from increased intra-abdominal pressure. Respiratory. Reduced FRC due to ascites, reduces oxygen stores and safe apnea time during intubation, and increases shunt leading to hypoxia. Ensure adequate pre-oxygenation in head-up position. Capnography and arterial blood gas monitoring to target adequate ventilatory parameters. Care with high airway pressures due to ascites to avoid barotrauma. Provide PEEP to reduce atelectasis. C for cardiac. Ensure two large IV cannulae present for resuscitation of significant bleeding. Arterial line for beat-to-beat -beat blood pressure monitoring and arterial blood gas and electrolyte monitoring useful in the face of large fluid shifts. Cardiac output monitoring guides fluid management due to massive fluid shifts from loss of ascites and tissue removal. Neurological Pain management NSAIDs and paracetamol may be contraindicated if there is renal and liver dysfunction. The patient may already be on opioids and due to opioid tolerance may require higher doses of opioids. Avoid renally excreted opioids in the presence of renal dysfunction. Consider epidural analgesia if coagulation profile permits or rectus sheath catheters for opioid sparing analgesia. Vagal stimulation may occur during traction on pelvic organs or mesentery. Treat with vagolytics. GI. PONV is a particular problem. Avoid nitrous oxide. Provide prophylactic antiemetics and consider TIVA. Hematology. Significant blood loss may occur due to oozing from many tissue surfaces. Monitor with near patient testing for hemoglobin and coagulation. Risk of deep vein thrombosis is addressed by automated intermittent leg compression devices intraoperatively. Immune and infection. Marrow suppression leads to increased risk of infection. Scrupulous asepsis is required. Prophylactic antibiotics reduces post-op wound infection rates for certain operations. Check hospital protocol. Cutaneo musculoskeletal. Prolonged surgery requires care with positioning and padding to avoid pressure injuries. Care if known bony metastasis to avoid pathological fractures. Renal. Catheterize to monitor urine output to assist with managing fluid balance in the presence of large fluid shifts. Use of drugs whose metabolism is independent of renal function is beneficial, such as remifentanil and atracurum. Liver. Risk of liver dysfunction. Consider drug suitability in the face of liver dysfunction. Metabolic. Prolonged surgery risk hypothermia. Provide active warming pre-induction and intraoperatively. Monitor temperature. Use warm fluids, forced air warmer, underbody warming mattress, insulating head, etc. to maintain normal thermia. Arterial blood gas analysis to monitor lactate and base excess in the presence of large fluid shifts. Positioning. Take care during patient positioning. Patients may be moved up or down the table and airway devices may be dislodged or disconnected. Pre-existing back pain or joint pain may be worsened in the lithotomy position, and if the legs are supported in stirrups, there is potential for common peroneal nerve injury. Possible nerve injuries during supine position include supraorbital nerve due to pressure from endotracheal tube connector, nerves innervating the eye and cranial nerve 7 due to pressure from face mask, brachial plexus due to traction, radial nerve due to pressure from screen supports or NIBB cuff, ulna nerve due to pressure from edge of operating table mattress. Possible nerve injuries during lithotomy position includes cervical spinal cord due to movement up and down the table, sciatic nerve which is stretched between the sciatic notch and neck of fibula, femoral nerve due to flexion of the thigh which stretches the nerve against the inguinal ligament, posterior tibial nerve due to pressure from stirrups, common peroneal nerve due to compression against head of fibula, saphenous nerve due to compression against medial tibial condyle, obturator nerve due to flexion in the obturator foramen. 
post-op management, consideration of location of post-op care, level 1 or level 2, for example, if there has been significant blood loss or if there is significant preoperative or intraoperative organ dysfunction, possibly need for level 3 care. Respiratory. Post-op oxygen, especially if on opioid PCA, the patient may need additional respiratory support such as non-invasive ventilation. Cardiac. Post-op heart rate, blood pressure and cardiac output monitoring to guide ongoing fluids. Reaccumulation of ascites may result in intravascular depletion. Neurology. Pain management to be optimized by involving acute pain management team. Fentanyl may be indicated if there is renal impairment. Hematology. Risk of DVT is addressed by use of thromboembolic deterrent stockings, low molecular weight heparin if no contraindications, and early mobilization. Renal. Urine output monitoring to help guide ongoing fluid management. Nutrition. Re-establish enteral nutrition as soon as possible or consider parenteral nutrition if enteral nutrition is delayed.